Hello chess friends and welcome to the of chess channel and welcome to our best chess games of all time series. So in this series we're following the best of the best, the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I wanted to show you really an immortal chess game that was played in the 1953 candidates tournament between the legendary FM Geller against also another legendary player Max Juve. FM Geller was uh, in his prime twice the winner of the USSR chess championship. It was really I think a great great accomplishment. On the other hand of course Max Juve was was the fifth world champion in chess history so it was a really immortal chess game that i wanted to show you today although both of them didn't win the candidates 1953 vasily smyslov was the winner of this very very prestige tournament vasily smyslov then had the opportunity to battle for the world championship throne but still this game uh, will always be written in chess history books as uh, probably the best game from that tournament but also one of the best chess games of all time so let's check out now the game uh, here d4 by fm geller uh, knight to f6 by um, Max Juve. We have c4, e6, knight to c3, bishop to b4. The Nimzo Indian is on the board. So the Nimzo is always, of course, a battle for the e4 square. You see, black is indirectly attacking this e4 by pinning the knight. The knight is the key protector of the e4 square. And there now are several ways how white can approach here, uh, how white can battle for the e4. In the game, uh, FM Geller plays this normal line. Uh, the normal line is this move e3 we want to play bishop to d3 knight to e2 and then f3 e4 because uh, with the move f3 we're preventing this uh, potential knight post of the knight uh, which is a very very annoying move that black can play and in the game here of uh, c5 played by max juve he breaks the position uh, in the center immediately because he wants to stay a little bit further with his pin here and the c5 move is nothing wrong with that move because we would play this move anyway in any time of, of the chess game so that's why an early c5 is perfectly fine here breaking uh, white's pawn central control and here after a3 we have bishop takes c3 b takes c3 and now b6 b6 is a very important move i've explained it many times in my nimzo indian defense series if you have followed my youtube chess channel so far i've created also the nimzo indian from black perspective because what black uh, is hoping for here that maybe white takes d takes c5 after b takes c5 okay there are now several weaknesses maybe we have here a weak square uh, maybe there are also some weaknesses here but this pawn structure of white is simply an object of black's attack these three pawns are simply two weak pawns so that's why white is hoping for here to get a pawn central control with f3 e4 and hopes that black takes here maybe with with ideas of uh, c takes d4 and then after c takes d4 you see then uh, white could maybe improve the pawn structure white wouldn't have any more the double pawn structure on the c file so these are the tiny little uh, positional things here in this position and uh, you see now both of these players are simply keeping the tension a little bit further in the center so no one wants to take here around the square c5 or around the square d4 so here bishop to d3 fm geller continues normal development bishop to b7 we have now this idea f3 because uh, if you play something like knight to f3 then uh, black could always here battle uh, for the e4 square uh, would play simply with something like d6 knight to d7 and then followed also with knight to f6 maybe even uh, with in some occasions and afterwards with some d5 or f5 ideas to further cement simply the position around the square e4 so therefore that's, that's why this f3 move is i think a very often played line knight to c6 now uh max uv's ideas simply to go after this pawn because the c4 pawn is also long-term weakness in nimzo indian structures uh this pawn could be further attacked with some ideas bishop to a6 then rook to c8 and maybe finally then to take uh, c takes d4 then the c file could get open and the c4 could be simply taken out so sometimes um, white is trying in these types of structures to simply give up the pawn on c4 and is trying then to continue his attack here on the king side with e uh, e4 f4 and similar ideas so it's not simply trying to defend anymore the spawn because if black attacks simply too much the spawn on, on c4 then the pieces could be deflected towards the queen side and then you know you don't have any more defenders on the king side so it's sometimes simply a battle i've played several times this position also from white and from black's perspective it's really a complicated game so uh, here after move knight to e2 we have chaos and castling also by fm geller we have now this idea knight to a5 and now 
e4 played by uh, by fn geller what is he's hoping for again is uh, some ideas of c takes d4 c takes d4 and you see now we have improved the pawn structure we have now a very nice and healthy pawn structure we would love to play something like bishop to e3 and then maybe something like rook to c1 in order to protect this pawn but um Max Juve had a different idea here in mind. He plays first the move knight to e8. Maybe now these days this move is not evaluated as the best engine move, but it's not the point about that. What uh, Max Juve is hoping for after potential f4 move, this could be a very nice idea. Then many times you see black is playing the move f5. f5 is now challenging white center. You see the white center is challenged here by the c5 pawn, but also by the f5 pawn. So we have to battle a little bit uh, against the central pawn storm that uh, white is building here. It's not so easy to play this game from both sides. So as I said, uh, here after move knight to e8, uh, fm geller simply goes knight to g3. He wants simply to support further his potential attack with f4 f5 in the game finally max you would take c takes d4 he goes now simply for the uh, c4 pawn uh, as i said sometimes when we get this attack against the weak c4 pawn then your pieces are deflected to the queen that you don't have so many defenders here after c takes d4 now uh, max Juve continues the attack and basically it's not so good to defend this position with queen to e2 we'll get simply bishop to a6 and uh, you cannot defend anymore i think this pawn uh here after move rook to c8 fm geller goes with the move f4 and it's really wild you see it's i think a natural move this move f4 i think 99 percent of us would play this move will try simply to push this pawn further actually the best way here to proceed is to move c5 because if b takes c5 happens then we would simply take the d takes c5 and after rook to c5 we would then simply have an idea here bishop to e3 and although white is down upon uh, i think the activity of this bishop pair is simply too much to handle here for black then white could go with f4 f5 you see also this pawn is hanging we could use maybe here some ideas of rook to b1 uh, attacking the bishop then the knight is a little bit stuck uh, to the defense of the bishop so as i said c5 is actually here the suggested move also by the engine uh but as i said i'm not sure how many of us would really play from white perspective this move c5 uh in the game as we said f4 was played now f and geller goes all in he's trying now to simply give up his pawn and he's trying now to get his uh, pawn attack here on the king side with the support of the bishop pair he's trying now to attack also the weak h7 now now there are now ideas of f5 followed with queen to h5 this is the main tactical goal of white with simply giving up a pawn here on c4 knight to c4 finally we have uh, f5 we have f6 um max uv blocks a little bit the pawn uh the pawn storm that white has built here and we have now rook to f4 by fm geller this is a wild move you get what uh of course what fm geller's idea is here is rook to h4 followed with queen to h5 with the support of the bishop maybe the knight could sneak in really really a wild attack here already by fm geller but now max juve simply plays a calm move and actually it's one of the uh toughest move to find and actually it's the best also engine move it's the move b5 b5 cement simply our position our knight is loose a little bit on the board here on the square c4 now we could maybe activate our rook something like d6 if the, the position um, allows it also rook to c7 maybe to protect further our uh, seventh rank so we have now a firm and compact position around the square c4 so if white wants to take of course the knight on c4 you can do it but we'll simply recapture with the pawn or with the rook so now at least the pawn, uh, the position on the queen side is cemented now it's time to defend the position on on the king side so here in the game fm geller plays of course rook to h4 look how fm attacks this position we have queen to b6 a very nice move by um, max juve attacking simply the d4 pawn and now fm geller goes simply all in he, he plays simply e5 if you try queen to h5 here it seems like a dangerous idea but it's actually not a problem to defend this position now for black queen to d4 will happen king to f1 and now we'll simply take out the rook you could try maybe here to queen takes h7 but you get only this check queen to h5 and i think uh, black can escape black is perfectly fine here black is simply winning this position you see also the bishop on c1 is hanging so no problems here for black so e5 
breaks the position here in the center what again fn geller is hoping for is to liberate here this long diagonal for the bishop with the support of this bishop uh it's already a dangerous attack for black but it's defendable because here of course uh, max you will play the correct move knight takes e5 you cannot take because of the pin by the queen against this king here we have uh, f takes e6 liberating the long diagonal we have knight to d3 and now queen to d3 you see now f uh, fm geller attacks simply the h7 weakness we have queen to e6 and now queen takes h7 king to f7 and now we have bishop to h6 the idea is clear we want to attack further here the position with knight to h5 this is now a clear target and here comes really the critical moment of the game here max Uwe plays an immortal immortal move here he plays now the move rook to h8 and there is now a wild line uh, actually the only way here to defend for uh, white's position is simply to take like um, uh, like fm geller did but now comes here rook to c2 with the threat of the move rook takes g2 and you can pause now the video and maybe try to defend this position for white it there is only one move that can help you out maybe pause the video and probably if uh, fm geller would have played this move this game would end in a draw this was an immortal immortal decoy here by um, max juve now i hope you can find this move it's really not so, so easy to see it's uh, such a complicated line now uh, but actually it's the only move that white needs to play in order to hope for a draw i think here okay the the only move that helps you out is the move d5 after bishop to d5 still this threat remains but actually now after rook to d1 we have the uh, decoyed here a little bit of the bishop on d5 now there is this threat to simply give up the rook uh, for the exchange and now in the potential continuation after rook to g2 king to f1 of course you cannot go to h1 because you get checkmated here um you can rook to g3 or even rook to d2 are some ideas with the discovered attack and will simply take out the rook so this is these are really the main tactical threats here here king to f1 maybe you can take out the bishop but now a white needs simply to give up back the exchange rook takes d5 after rook takes g3 you see the game becomes really complicated knight to g7 uh, you can maybe try this check queen takes d7 and now after uh h takes g3 this should, should suggested line by the engine white is up the exchange but of course black has two extra pawns as a compensation i think this game would end in a draw white would play simply at least would try to do some perpetuals and this would be a draw but here after move uh, rook to c2 uh fm geller did, didn't uh, react correctly he tried to trade off the rooks with the move rook to c1 and now after rook takes g2 king to f1 we have queen to b3 now there is the serious threat queen to f3 followed with uh, uh, queen to f2 and similar ideas after king to e1 we have now this move queen to f3 and in this position f and geller resign queen to f2 of course followed with uh here uh, rook to g1 is uh, the serious threat you get checkmated at least in seven moves what you can do just simply prolong the game by sacrificing some pieces but that's not the point you cannot prevent this checkmate so really really wild game um, here it was really the critical moment let's go back rook to h4 here after here rook to h8 uh, in chess history books i think this move will be written as really one of the most immortal moves in chess history deflecting the queen from some life square activities now after rook to uh, c2 you see the queen got deflected here it's not protecting anymore the square and it was from that point on a winning game from max juve as i said d5 the only move here in order to defend this position but it's really hard to see it's really a wild tactical line only alpha zero lila zero stockfish and then can see this move this is human level chess and uh, this was the only move for fm geller okay i hope that you enjoy this game really really wild stuff uh, if you want to see more games like this more attacking brilliances from chess history check out my best chess games of all time series here is also the link and if you want to see maybe some best chess engine games check out my comment the chess games played by computers here's also the link with some alpha zero lila zero stock with games and, and more and uh, if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel See you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course.